I'm good. How are you, Stan? Oh, man. You know, I think that we knew this was coming after the release last week, but I guess I wasn't prepared that it was going to happen this quickly. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was on everyone's radar because of the press release, but people did think she would hang on a little bit longer. She was described as feisty right up to the end, surrounded by her loved ones. But, you know, uh, she was ready for it. The, 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 the articles, the statements, the releases I saw, she was at peace with everything and, and more concerned with her family and how they would continue. And that falls right in line with what we know about how she lived her life. She was the perfect example of how to separate personal, professional, and political. And I really don't know how she, she played all those roles so eloquently, but she's, she's definitely an example for all of that. Well, we are talking with uh, Andrew Oak. He is the first ladies man, knows pretty much everything about first ladies. And Andrew, you know, we have a great partnership with the Barbara Bush Children's Hospital here at Maine Medical Center. As a matter of fact, we've raised well over $2 million over the years with our annual Radiothon. And we always knew that Barbara was a big supporter uh, when it comes to kids and local things here in Maine with their home in Kenny Bunkport. Um, can you just kind of explain how she pulled that off, the political part? Because a lot of times, even if you're not into politics, but maybe your husband or your son are into politics, you kind of get framed into that. How did she not get affected by politics throughout her life? Stan, those are all excellent points. And, and before I answer that, I do want to send my condolences to the entire state of Maine because – you lost your first lady yesterday. She really was a daughter of Maine, an adopted daughter of Maine. All the work that she did there, remarkable. And, you know, she's in a very unusual position in that her husband and her son and her second son, all in politics, Jeb Bush as well. So she was under fire from all directions. She even said at one point before Jeb ran for president, she would think that the country could find someone with a name other than Bush, other than Clinton, that there were new people that needed to step up. She knew her worth. She knew her family's worth. And she comes from an almost forgotten time of true bipartisan politics. When she entertained, she had as many Democrats as Republicans in the White House, in, the, in her private home, at, at engagements, because she knew that there was compromise to be found and common ground out there. And I think that's how she danced the lines between the, the, the ag ag aggressive slander that, that comes a uh, politician's ways. Now, uh, while she was in the uh, White House, because a lot of folks, I was explaining this to my kids last night, that Barbara Bush, she was also the wife of the vice president of the United States for eight years as well. So she was basically there in Washington for 12 straight years. Absolutely. And before that, he had a congressional uh, uh, career. And before that, he had a CIA career. And before that, he was in China as an ambassador. I mean, this woman has given her life to public service, but she emphasized the entire time. It's so important to spend time with family, husband, sons, daughters, friends, relatives. She had a balance in her life that is, that is really uh, remarkable and rarely seen. And, and I saw a lot of that personal uh, uh, life in her scrapbook. She was an avid scrapbooker kept scrapbooks from the time she and H.W. started dating in the 40s. Hundreds of scrapbooks with thousands of pictures, and you really get to know what someone's like in their private time by looking at them. Think of your family photo albums and the pictures around the, the dining room table, the kitchen table at, at Thanksgiving or other holidays and celebrating birthdays and teaching kids how to ride bikes and going on fishing trips. With so many children and such an active family life, you can imagine... Uh, uh, her scrapbooks were quite remarkable. We're speaking with Andrew uh, Oak. He is the First Ladies Man. You can uh, check him out, firstladiesman.com. Andrew, one final question, because I know that you're being pulled in a ton of different directions this morning. What do you think everyone will remember the most about Barbara Bush? I think it's probably her legacy of, of children and reading. You know, the, the literacy campaign that she still, even up to her dying day, was in charge of down at the Bush Library and the stuff that she did right up there in Portland at the medical facility that you mentioned as well, she gave herself selflessly uh, 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 to these children and these causes. And, and it's, it's, I mean, tens of millions of dollars beyond what you guys have raised there at Frank FM with, with the Barbara Bush Medical Center. I mean, she raised 40, 50 some million dollars a year for literacy, her literacy campaign, and brought the, the bookmobile to places. And she's one first lady with, with, with 
she might have the most libraries, medical facilities, and, and organizations named after her and, and tied to her. And, and on top of that, she was still in charge of the family, the matriarch of a political dynasty of public service that, that was lasted decades. She was just amazing. I often wonder, if Barbara wasn't there, would the Bush's political careers been as successful? Yeah, no, and, and the answer is no, that they couldn't have. I, they, they, they owe, and they say this openly, they owe their, their, their lives, their careers, and their, their tight family to Barbara Bush. She is the true matriarch. She was called the enforcer. When everyone else was, uh, was in interviews reminiscing and crying, she was saying, oh, come on, pull it together, you know, and when everyone else wanted to be serious, she was cutting up. She didn't take herself too seriously, Stan, and that's a key to success in politics. She was criticized very early on in, in her White House years by people said that she wasn't terribly attractive. And she said that she was a fine-looking woman. She just didn't dress very well. So she, she definitely had a <laughs> sense of humor, self-deprecating. She knew her place, she knew herself, and she knew her worth in, in life. And, and we're the benefactors of all that. She was an amazing woman. Uh, she was a tough woman, and she had a huge, huge heart. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for uh, spending some time with us up here in uh, Maine. And uh, good luck today, because I know that you're going to be doing a ton of interviews for sure. Dan, I've always got time for you guys, and thank you so much for letting me reminisce about the life and legacy of this great woman. You can learn more about Andrew Oak, the First Ladies Man, by going to thefirstladiesman.com. Very grateful that he had time for us this morning for sure. Your Frankly Impossible question, that is on the way next. Frank 107.5.